Hello YouTube, this is Bruno with another Minecraft video for you. Today I'm gonna showcase a shulker farm that I have built in survival right here in the end. It produces over 3000 shells per hour. Carpet says it's 3100 and, ch and change. Despite its huge size, it goes pretty much up to build height. It is actually not that difficult to build in survival. So let's give you the short tour. Below the farm is a water collection and the shulkers reside in these chutes that are two by one. And in the center of these chutes are kind of aggression chambers where we have a snow golem firing at the shulker and a trap door that is opened and closed periodically to allow the shulker to become aggressive and lose the aggression. The farm is based on a video by Raceworks who improved on a design by HF. I will link both designs in the description. This farm I'm presenting here gives more than 10 times the rates and I believe is actually easier to build than the original. Now how can we build such a huge structure quickly? Well easy, we build it out of lava and water making cobblestone walls. So pretty much the whole structure except for the water collection in the bottom is vertical so all the walls go straight down. So all we need to do is create a template on top, create the same template on the bottom, fill the template with lava and pour water down the sides. We will have perfect walls except just a couple of blocks at the top and the bottom that will be off but all the blocks in between will be perfect and so basically it doesn't matter how high we build it. We cannot build 300 blocks high or 20 blocks high, it's the same effort. So that's one part of a huge optimization and the other part is that we don't need a lot of shulkers to start a farm. So usually if we have something like 10 aggression cells in there, one would think we need 11, 12 shulkers to get the farm going, but actually we will need only two because we will use a clever construction using scaffolding to fill these aggression cells, but we'll come to that a bit later. This video has two parts. First, I'm gonna explain the principles of the farm and I will also give you the cliff notes on some of the optimizations I used to build this farm quickly in survival. There's also a video with a detailed build tutorial where I built this farm behind me. Of course, I will link that video in the description. I will not, however, go into detail how shaka farming is done in general. I would strongly recommend to check out a few videos by Ending Credits who has done a fantastic series on shaka farming. And not only that, but he also answered quite a lot of my questions on Reddit. So big shout out, without him, there wouldn't be this video here. Let's head to a creative world where we can better see what's going on. There is of course a world download that contains both this build in survival and the creative part and a few magic command blocks that teleport you to the other part. This farm is of course scalable, so in two ways. First, you can stack as many aggression cells on each other as the build height allows. So in the end, we build a farm containing nine aggression cells, 3,100 shells. This farm here has 11 aggression cells and it produces even a few more. Of course, you can build a much smaller version. You don't have to build it this high. You can use just two or three or four aggression cells each of the aggression cell will give you about 300 or to 350 shells an hour. And also you don't have to use quite this large footprint here, which is basically a circle with a diameter of 32 blocks. You could build it significantly smaller than that. Also the farm is rather easy to build. It doesn't use a ton of complicated redstone. So apart from the walls, all you need are a couple of clocks controlling how long this trap drawer is open and closed and just this tiny bit of redstone for each aggression cell. So otherwise it's just the walls and the roof and the water collection below, some little details like the on off switch and here don't be too confused if you don't know carpet, this wool block allows me to do this object counting. In the actual build this wool of course is replaced what I have built in survival is kind of the big version that goes all the way up to build height. It took me three to four hours building it. This time can be reduced if you use a smaller footprint and less aggression cells. 
The general idea, of course, is that shulkers will duplicate if they hit themselves with their own bullets or with other shulker bullets. There is a feature called group aggression. So what we can do, we have some kind of an aggression cell. We have a snow golem who fires at the shulker, but for some reason, and don't ask me, snowballs will pass lava, but the shulker bullets will be destroyed by lava. So this golem is perfectly safe, the shulker is perfectly safe, and if we close this door here, then after a while the shulker will lose the aggression. But the interesting thing is that if we have another shulker, this shulker will also become aggressive if the snow golem hits this shulker, because this shulker kind of calls to help all the shulkers in the vicinity, and you can see this one fires at the snow golem even though it doesn't have line of sight. In fact, I put a full block around both the shulker and the golem, so both are perfectly safe. So if we can force this shulker to hit itself with its bullets, then we are golden. Let's get a better look at the inside of our farm. I also use a glass texture that eliminates the border so that we can better see inside of the glass. So here at the bottom you can see the glass layout. These are these kind of toots uh, that are marked with the blue glass in the bottom. And here you have all the shulkers. In the middle you have aggression cells. This aggression cell contains a snow golem and a shulker as usual. I use an RS flip-flop to open the doors and a redstone transmission I will show you in a moment is done via the scaffolding. As I explained, all the walls are complete verticals. We can create them out of lava and water, so that's not a big of an issue. Now the roof is actually a bit different from our actual farm in survival and we will come to that in a moment. So up to the blue layer we are in the range of the aggression cells, so if shulkers sit here in the blue glass they will become aggressive. Now the layer below that, that is required for the water transport here. You can see the water is coming in from the side, going to the middle. You can actually extend these uh, chutes with blocks and buttons or something like that. Here in creative trapdoors are actually easier. And here you can see the redstone. Um, we have the scaffolding that sits on a solid block and on a trapdoor controlled by an ether clock on the bottom. We will uh, raise these redstone blocks and they will open the trapdoors. If you open the trapdoor for a moment, these observers here looking at the scaffolding will detect a change. So this observer will fire. So basically depending on which trapdoor I open, I will move the item either to this uh, dropper or to this dropper. This is a way how we can transmit a signal of redstone over basically 300 blocks if you like. We can transmit the signals to all of the aggression cells at the same time. And it's actually fairly inexpensive. So for each cell you need two droppers, one comparator, well two solid blocks, four observers and just a whole bunch of scaffolding. So that's all. At the bottom of the farm we have a hopper clock that controls the basic cycle of the doors and each time this redstone torch fires we will open the trap doors and then after a pulse extender runs out we will close them again. So these are the pistons moving the redstone blocks going into the trap doors. I haven't made a lot of effort to optimize the rate. At the moment we have something like 25 items in here. Maybe you can squeeze a few more percent of shulker shells out there by adding or removing a few items in this clock here. But if you make it too fast then the shulkers will not be aggressive and the rates will drop. There's an on-off switch which just blocks these, which blocks the hopper clock. Here I've used just a bit of honey because honey is automatically spawn proof so no shulker can attach the honey. This is the water transport bringing out the shells. So that's actually all pretty easy. As for the mechanics that open and close the trapdoors, the scaffolding based build has the advantage that it's really easy to build. I mean placing like 300 scaffolding or 400 scaffolding can be done in the blink of an eye. And as you can see it doesn't really interfere with the water collection. However, when I built this farm I realized that some people might prefer it 
if they have the controlling on the top. Now having the controlling clocks in the bottom allows us to have an on-off switch right here where we collect the shells. However, the system can be built on top as well. In this case we use walls and not scaffolding because walls have the properties that the observers realize if the height changes. This wall is sitting inside a 2x1 chute and it's important that the chute is uh, continued here until the top. But then you can push a single wall in here and you will get the observer signal all the way down, even 300 blocks down. So that's not an issue. And then you would have the two clocks here on, on the top. In this case, I have one clock here controlling the main cycle. And there is another delay circuit. In the bottom, I just used the pulse extender. This is another variant of the ether clock, which allows me kind of a fine tuning control on how long I want the doors open. Obviously, you would have to do a bit of spawn proofing here. So maybe your best option is to use something like glass panes because you can place them adjacent to redstone components without affecting them. That's not too much. So um, you only have to spawn proof a bit of the system. And as you can see, a lot of this can be built out of slabs anyway. The on off switch in this case is here, turning off this master clock. So if you prefer to build the clocks on the top and not dig into the bottom of the farm, it's simply your choice. If you build such a farm, there are two things that are actually take a lot of effort. And the first thing is that you will have to build a walls, which we shortened a lot by using lava. And the second issue is that you have to fill all these aggression cells with shakas, right? So here we have 11 aggression cells, so we basically need to initialize the system with 11 shakas. But there's also a way around this, how we can start the farm with just two shakas. So here you can see the normal layout of the aggression cells of a black block once every, every five blocks. So you can see they are spaced out by 20 blocks. What we can do is to use the scaffolding mechanics, which are very nicely described in the video by ending credits. Now, if we force a shaka into scaffolding, then it will teleport there, but it will try to teleport away and teleport to the top if it has no other option than scaffolding. Let's assume this is how we integrated the farm into our chutes. As you can see, we have cells on this side. So this, this one would obviously build up, right? So here in the corner, we have blocks that will be completely encased and are kind of useless to the farm. So we will use them. And what we do is we knock out two blocks and put scaffolding in. And, and we will also do this for the middle of this three by three area like this. And for these two blocks. And then we add again two blocks here. And now you can see once we build up the walls later, that we have three spaces, spaces where the shaka can teleport in, but the shaka will try to teleport out right away. And now we repeat this, so just one block distance, again scaffolding, scaffolding, and let's fill in the glass here. Obviously we have the snow golem, so we don't want to have, want to have any shakas here in the vicinity. So make sure that you have a full block here, that the snow golem is safe. Now here at the top, we will have the shaka. So we continue this pattern at this height. So just above the shaka. And again, scaffolding, scaffolding, and close it off. And now if you count, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The, the distance between these scaffoldings is, is exactly eight, which means that a shaka can teleport from the bottom scaffolding to the top. So it can make this jump. We will continue the, this pattern here. And as you can see, we end up exactly one block below the snow golem. So again, if we continue the pattern on top here, we will have once more a distance of eight. You could also, if you are 
not sure about this, you could also sacrifice one of these shoots here. Let's say maybe this one. So basically you could fill in one side and use scaffolding here. Build this up and then you could of course bridge this gap here. Now this will make the process of filling up the aggression cells just a bit faster, but it works without this additional scaffolding. So let's simulate how to start up the farm. We have one shulker here in the lowest aggression cell and we will bring in one additional shulker just by making this trapdoor illegal for a moment. So the shulker has to teleport in. Let's start the redstone clock here at the bottom. And pretty much immediately as soon as the trapdoor opens the shulker will become aggressive. It will fire bullets and hopefully it will start replicating soon. Might take a while. No luck on the first attempt. There we go, we have a second shulker. Now let's increase speed a bit. Okay, so as you can see the shulkers are spreading out really nicely and you have to bring in the first shulker rather low because otherwise the shulker could teleport out of the range of the snow golem. You could hope that if you let the farm run for sufficiently long that one shulker would just by chance teleport in this chamber here and fill the second aggression chamber. But unfortunately this is simply not going to happen. This is one spot and we have like thousands of legal spots around this. But the problem is that at some point these shulkers will sit at a height where they are no longer aggressive. So this shulker will make all shulkers aggressive that are up to 10 blocks higher. All these shulkers here that are at a level higher will never become aggressive. So they will just sit there and do nothing. The reaction will go on here in the bottom because our farm is, is large enough and you will even get some reasonable rates. You might get something like 250 shells an hour if you let it run. But I, I simulated it for many many hours and it never happened that the shulker got in here. At one point even the reaction stopped because at some point there were so many shulkers crammed up here that basically the chances of replicating were too low for the remaining shulkers. So that's not an option. But now the scaffolding comes in that we have placed here because what we can do is to fill all these chutes with water and first force all the shulkers in to the inside. If we fill all these chutes, these scaffolding blocks here will be the only ones remaining that are legal along with the spots in our aggression chamber. So a lot of shulkers will die because they won't find the path to the scaffolding, but a few shulkers will teleport in here and then they will start climbing because a shulker sitting on scaffolding will always try to climb up if there is another spot below, uh, above it. So first you absolutely want to stop the farm and wait a moment until all the bullets are died down. Now this might take a while. And here, just in, in this creative world, we have a different roof. Now, if you build this in survival, obviously you just use slabs between the drop shoots, so there are, is no redstone on top. But here, this contraption allows me to flood a lot of cells with water at the same time. Now let's do this. Le and let's first start by flooding the outside. So we want to push the shulker to the inside towards our scaffolding. Now in survival, you will have to basically, if you have slapped this off, you will have to remove the slabs. Now this is something that takes a few minutes, but it's not that bad. There's really no need to, to build any complicated redstone on top here. We are filling up pretty much all of the chutes, except for a few in the middle, just for demonstration purposes. So as you can see here, we have a few dry runs, but a lot of water on the outside. And now if we check the lower part of the farm, you will see that the shulkers are all sitting in the few inner drop chutes that we still left. 
So they're all perfectly happy here, they're doing nothing. So let's fill the very last shoots. And we actually got lucky, we already filled one aggression cell, which is rather unexpected and happens rarely. Usually this goes later. Okay, here comes the water. And now the Shalkas have no other choice but to teleport into the scaffolding, because these are the last remaining legal spots. A few won't find any spaces, so they will take damage and they will eventually die. But a few Shalkas go in there and they will make their way up because they can teleport up. And now these spots in the aggression cells look rather sweet because they are one of the very few remaining available spots. And now you might have to wait a bit, but let's use the replay mod to look at the process. So you can see the Shalkas go into the lowest spaces and it may take a while, but they work their way up and eventually they also fill the empty slots in the aggression chambers. Now it's not guaranteed that one Shalka ends up in each aggression chamber, especially at the bottom, but the success rates are pretty good. So this is already looking rather good. And you see we still have a few Shalkas here in the scaffolding. Once we remove the water from our drop shoots, these Shalkas will immediately teleport out into the farm and start re the reaction again. And you might have to do this a couple of times anyway. Let's say we open just the inner area, so naturally you don't want to fill in all the slabs. But we will give, give our Shalkas just a bit of room. So you see all the outer tubes are still filled with water. Wait a moment until the water drops. The Shalkas that are still stuck in the scaffolding will teleport out immediately as soon as they find a dry place while the Shalkas in the aggression cells will stay in there. Now there's one issue and the issue is that this Shalka might be damaged. So this one should be okay. But if the Shalka that teleported into the aggression cells have taken 50% damage or more, then they will teleport away if they are hit by the snow uh, golems. So even though we have filled most of the cells here, there might be a few, like that one, that will teleport out of these aggression chambers again, unfortunately. We made the farm habitable, like just in the inside. Let's start the clock. All the shulkers on in the bottom part will probably have teleported up, so the reaction will have to start up here. But the reaction will start up again. If you want to make sure that the reaction starts again, you can, you can build maybe a, a couple of spaces just here in the corner of, of a farm. And you will, you just wait until a few shalkas are attached here. So if you have trouble starting up the reaction again, this lowest cell, I mean, once the shalka is in there and once it's healthy, it will never get out. So this one is perfectly safe. So if we have trouble starting up the reaction again, all we need to do is put this little guy back into the farm and the reaction will start. But again, chances are that this is not necessary. So as you can see at the top, it's a bit obscured by the water in the outside but we already have another reaction going. And now we won't get nearly as many Shalkas because all these outside cells are still filled with water, but we will get enough to repeat our populating experiment. Again, turn off the farm, and then we repeat the process of driving the Shalkas into the scaffolding. And now it's purely luck. In some cases, pretty much all of the aggression cells were filled after my first run. In other cases, I had to do the process like three or four times to fill all. Now the whole process might seem rather complicated, but if you compare it to bringing in like 12 extra Shalkas here, it's a clearly a trade-off. So you can absolutely get rid of the scaffolding and just fill every aggression cell with a fresh Shalka. But that can be quite a lot of hassle. And the process here is not as difficult as it seems. Basically, all you have to do after the first reaction, remove the slabs on the roof, 
which will take maybe four or five minute stops. Then you just have to wait until the shakas have moved into the scaffolding and into the aggression cells. And then in the middle, you just have to open just a handful of drop shoots. I don't know, maybe place something like 40, 50 slabs again and start the reaction again. Wait a moment, flop the shoots again, wait a moment. And after doing this two or three times, you will have the whole farm filled. Now compare this by building like a rail to each of the 10, 11, 12 aggression cells. Grab a shaker, put it in, close the cell up again. If you build a smaller version, if you have just two or maybe three aggression cells, then it's probably better just to put all the shakers in manually. If you have a lot of aggression cells, I believe this process here is a lot easier. With the things happening here being random processes, there are a few risks. The first risk that I want to talk about is that the reaction dies down before you, it even starts. Let's say you have brought in the first two shakers, which are sitting here in the aggression chamber and the other here. If you are very unlucky, this shaker could just hit itself and instead of duplicating, teleport up out of the range of this shaker. This is actually very unlikely to happen, but it can happen. So I started the farm at least 20 times and it happened to me once that the reaction died down. So in this case, if the shaker just teleports up, you will have to bring in a second shaker. And that's also the reason why this first shaker should be brought in as low as possible. If the teleport starts here at the bottom of the farm, it has to teleport three times to get out of range because it basically has to go more than 16 blocks up and 16 blocks is the most it can do in two jumps. So just bring in the first shaker low and you shouldn't really have a problem unless you are very unlucky. Now the second risk is a bit more severe. Still in most cases you will be fine. This could happen like say one out of five times maybe. Judging from my experience with starting this farm about 20 times. After starting the farm with two shakers and running it for a while, we have 36 shakers in the system now. And now we do the process of pushing them into the scaffolding. So you see they're making their way up as expected. However, we lost most of the shakers in the process. What could, could happen is that most of the shakers died off, so we started with 35. Now we have only 15 shakers left. Let's say 10 of them are in the aggression cells, so we will have only five more shakers out there, so it could be even worse. And now if these are in the range of the aggression cells that are filled with damaged shakers, so let's say this shaker teleports away, this guy here won't become aggressive and won't duplicate. So this could be a scenario where the, where the reaction dies down. And there are two solutions to that. The easiest solution is once again to bring in a new shaker. So maybe you should create a few more spaces for them if you don't want to wait too long until this happens. If you have a shaker here, you can always force it back into the farm. But there's another way. You can actually stash a few shakers down the bottom in a way that they can be stored only if the farm is turned off. Here it is a bit tough to see because of the spawn proofing, but here we have shakers attached to a few trapdoors and these trapdoors are in a position that a shaker can attach only if the farm is turned off. So the redstone line we have coming in here is activated if the farm is turned off. So what happens? We turn the farm off, we give our shakers a few spaces down here in the bottom just below our farm just below the water transport and once we fill our chutes with water we will have a few shaker teleport in here. Usually we have plenty so the rest will go into the scaffolding hopefully if they don't die and make their way up. But anyway once we start the farm up all these trapdoors become illegal and the shakers will teleport back into the bottom part of the farm and will start the reaction again. There's a third option but I admit I haven't really explored that. You could actually start up by building only the central pillar with the scaffolding in. Then you could spawn proof it by pouring water down on the sides where the shakers can only go into the scaffolding or into the aggression chambers. And then you could bring all the required shakers from an entity nearby. The advantage of that would be that you could 
have one railway line ending probably here below the farm. Force each of the shulkers who will be in perfect health to go into the scaffolding here. Then they would make their way up and populate the cells. So with a bit of patience, you would probably, if you have 10 cells, you would probably have to bring in 10 shulkers or maybe 11. After that, all the cells would be filled. You could also build like a temporary shulker farm, maybe a scaffolding bar based here that produces just the first 10 or 11 shulkers that you need to start up the farm. I think this method of populating the aggression cells has a lot of potential because it saves you a lot of hassle and of course you can use this for even larger farms if, for example, you build more than one of these towers. So this would obviously work if you cluster a few of these farms together. However, it would be quite nice if we could simplify this part of the populating just a little bit more. Let's talk briefly about the dimension of this farm. You have these kind of aggression cells and in the radius around it where the shulkers get aggressive, you have these chutes where they sit in and fire at themselves. And to check out the radius for that, you can have a look at this here. So this is a mini hub feature. So here we have a golem, here we have a representation of the shulker and the range of the golem is 20 block Euclidean distance. So it's a, it's a sphere with a radius of 20 around the snow golem and the shulker will make shulkers aggressive in this rectangle that you can see here. So which is basically 20 blocks in each direction and 10 blocks in each of the vertical directions. So you can go 10 blocks up or 10 blocks down from the shulker. It's important that all of the farm is in both ranges, right? So you basically have to find the intersection of the two and uh, find out how big you can do this. Now, if you figure out the optimal configuration, then you end up with something like that, basically with a circle that has a radius of 16 blocks. So finally, let's talk about lag. If you build a farm this high, here, 11 aggression chambers, you will create a lot of lag because you have over 250 shakas here. So this is also a very efficient mob switch if the farm is turned off, but loaded. Due to the way we built this using lava, we can't have any structure in the chutes. And Ray in his or original design uses a few buttons because buttons stop shaka bullets. If you observe the operation of the farm, these shaka bullets can have a rather long life and they will usually hover around the feet level of the golem. Now I don't have a gaming PC, so maybe the lag is a bit better for you or if you play on the server, but still a tick time of 26 seconds isn't that great. And you will see that most of that is caused by the shulker bullets, even though a significant part is caused by the shulkers itself. Shulkers, three milliseconds, shulker bullets, 16 milliseconds. Now the way to fix this would be to insert buttons right here at the level where the golem has its feet. I did try this and indeed the lag was significantly reduced. Like we cut the lag from the bullets by 80%. Now obviously you have to do this after you have populated the aggression cells because buttons are washed away by water and you also can't use any other contraptions like signs or open fence gates that would also uh, block the shulker bullets. The rates of the farm will decrease a bit by 25 to 30 percent. So if this farm does 3700 shells without the buttons, with the buttons it would be probably just short of 3000 or something. Now, if you play a single player, you probably don't care much about it. So you can just AFK and have the farm running, so that won't be a problem. And in any case, if you turn the farm off, then most of the lag will be gone once the shulker bullets are died down. On a server with many players, you might want to build a smaller version of the farm, or you might want to add a few of the buttons after you have the farm operational to reduce lag. Just go into one drop chute, uh, using scaffolding at the desired level, break the blocks, place the buttons, close the blocks off, but it is obviously a lot of work. If anyone has a better idea on how to re improve lag on this farm, I would be very much interested to hear it. But lag or not, I believe it's an interesting application of the reactor principle and it is absolutely feasible to build it in survival. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
check out my build tutorial if you're interested in that one. Otherwise, thank you for staying with me so long. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a comment if you have any questions, and see you next time. Bye-bye.